Welcome to our emergency hackathon tutorial number four. This one we're going to be talking about how to do a rocking animation. There's some basic animations like we were saying that are really useful and sometimes people get a little snarled up on them. This again is going to be mostly the hack version. <laughs> there are other ways of doing these things that are much more elegant and increase your workflow speed, but it's still going to introduce you to a bunch of different concepts that you may not have run into before, so let's do it. Now if you're continuing on from tutorial Three, this is where you're going to end up and I'll show you how to clean it up. If you're joining us from a new start then just go to the chapter 3 tutorial number 4 um, the files and open up the start. Uh, it'll say something like looping rock start. Open that file and you'll be caught up with us here shortly. So in order to, to clean this up, now we've done this a couple times before but in order to clean this up it's going to be really really easy. Um, one way you know is to select this and then come down here, select this pose segment and then come down here and click reset all. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is just delete the segment. So click on this and hit the delete key or backspace on your PC and that's it. Uh, now that does the same thing as as uh, hitting reset all and it also sets the size of the pose back to one second. Now you'll notice that the pose didn't delete completely. Uh, that's because every track has to have at least one pose on the track. All right, that's just one of the rules of the program. You always have to have a pose. The same way that all objects have to exist on a track. You can't have any objects that are just floating around in the ether inside this program. All objects exist on a track. All tracks have to have at least one pose. All right, so those are those are the basic rules of the program. Now, what we're doing with this rocking action is we're going to take the animation, I'm sorry, we're going to take the object and we're going to make it rock uh, back and forth, like we're going to go from here to there and back and forth and back and forth in a loop. Okay, that's a, a real useful sort of animation to do. Now notice that what I'm doing right now is I'm moving the camera. Okay, and we want to do this as an object animation. So we're going to start with the camera uh, looking at it from maybe a little bit below like that and then we're going to grab the object. Now in order to get this, we need two, you'd think of them again, this is a hack job, right? <laughs> so you'd think of them as keyframes. One keyframe to the left, one keyframe to the right, and then back to the left again. So here's our pose, and we're going to click and start dragging, and it usually gives us this message, which says you're about to tweak something. Well, that's what we're doing. We're, we're doing the tweak version of this. Remember, tweaks are only for custom uh, custom controls, custom hacking, uh, really using these pose positioning controls down here are an awful lot easier and they're so much more flexible. Uh, but we're ignoring these for right now and just showing you the, you know, the hack version way of getting through it. So you're going to click OK and then drag this thing to the left about like that. Uh, that's pretty good. Now we need to create another pose with the objects rotated to the right. So we're going to double click where there's nothing in the timeline and then we can click on this guy and then drag it to the right okay about like that now look what's gonna happen as we rotate as we go through this right in about the center here and I'm gonna switch back to the camera and look at this from above you'll notice that as it's doing this look what happens the letters scrunch together and they spread back apart so if I select the transition, you'll be able to see the motion paths. That's because the motion paths are all moving in a straight line. So you see, they're doing the right thing, but the program is assuming that you're moving everything independently. Um, this program was created to do the difficult things very easily. So when you do something really simple like this, it takes one extra step. Um, it doesn't take any more steps than it would in any other program, but for this program, it takes one extra step. So I'll show you what that is. Delete the last pose by clicking on it and hitting the delete button, and that'll put everything back. Again, we still have the camera, and we're looking at the camera, and everything's good. Now, we want to get rid of the tweak before we do this next step. So select it, and then do remove tweaks right there, and that puts everything back. Now, here's the trick. You need to go to the object list right there, and that will show you that on track number one we have text block number one. Got that? Well, if you're animating by the text block, what you're doing is you're moving all these letters individually. So what we're going to do is just group these together by clicking the G button. Uh, select the text block and then clicking the G button right here. Click and now you see it adds a grouper to it, which is sort of like an invisible parent. 
So now when you animate the group, you'll be moving the text block but and not all the individual characters beneath it. Got that? So here we go, back to object mode. We still have the tumble t key selected. Make sure the group is the red item here. And then we can rotate it to the left like this. Double click to get a new pose. And now you see when we did this, um, everything deselected. So select it again, but notice that when you just click on it, you just selected the text block. So if I do this, actually I will do this, so you'll see what the problem is. Um, again, this is just the hack version, so you know, hacks don't always work as expected. But now check this out. If we, uh, if we set this up and we're going to loop through this, watch what happens. Nothing happens. Well, actually it changes just for a second. See, when it gets to here, then it changes. So it's nothing, it's pointed that way, and then suddenly it's pointed that way. The reason why is because at this pose, you animated the group. I mean, you set the position of the group. At this pose, you set the position of the text block. Got it? So as long as it's on the group number one, it's just sitting there, and then suddenly it gets to the next pose, and it shifts to group number two. I'm sorry, to text block. Um, so that's the problem, and again, this is a hack, right? That's why you don't want to do hacks. You don't want to do tweaking except when it's absolutely necessary. So here's what you're going to do. Select this and just delete it. That's the easiest way to clean this up. Now at this point, remember, we were animating the group. So when we create a new, uh, new pose by double-clicking, we need to reselect the group. Now we can rotate this over. Let's see, we're looking at this from above, weren't we? Or from a little bit below. So there we go. And here we go. There to there. There to there. It's not totally smooth, but um, let's, uh, let's see what we could do. Whoops, I double clicked on it. There we go. Select the text block and rotate it down a little bit. Close enough. Okay, so now when we loop through this guy, it goes to there, and then it snaps back. Fair enough. Okay, now, to make it rotate back to the exact same position, you know, you always duplicate your keyframes, right? So it's similar here. We're just going to duplicate this pose. Click on it, and then hold down the Option or the Alt key on the PC. Click and drag, and now you'll make a duplicate of this pose. Uh, let go of the mouse before you let go of the Option or Alt key. And now when we play it back, it will rotate until it stops, and then it rotates back. And then it starts over again. Okay, very good. So now the only thing left is to just set the timing. So here's how we're going to do that. Um, once it gets to the end, we want it, uh, to immediately loop back without any holds. So we're going to take the Start Work Area marker, hold down the Shift key, and drag it until it snaps right onto the edge of that uh, transition and do the same thing for the shift key I'm sorry for the end marker and now when we play it back when it's going to loop it's just going to bounce right back and start playing again very good the only problem now is that this is holding so we don't want to hold there so here's what we do for that click on the edge and drag it until it reduces it down to one single frame once it's here uh, if you click right on the center of that, you can drag this one frame left to right until it's in the middle. Uh, if you miss it, if you get a couple of pixels off, what it'll do is it'll open itself back up or it won't go anywhere. If you drag to the left and it's not going anywhere, drag to the right and you'll see that you actually clicked on an edge, not the center. So if this happens, um, you can just drag it until the left edge is where you want and then move it back. Or you can try it again by dragging right in the center and uh, and moving that one little frame by itself. If this is still too much trouble, uh, use the arrow keys, I'm sorry, use the little zoom button until you see one frame as a as a little rectangle and then you can click and drag on it just like you would um, if it were not one single frame. Okay, so there we go. Now at this point we can play it back and we see it's now going to bounce at one side, bounce at the other side, and bounce on one side again. So we're getting pretty good. Now I want to show you one extra thing. This is a looping animation, but it's it's bouncing. It's got too hard of a change in direction at the ends. So to fix that, we're going to add ease. 
Ease is a really cool thing, and in Pro Animator, it's super easy to use. So what we're going to do is this. Click on this transition right here, and down below in the animation controls, you'll see that everything updated to the uh, transition controls. We have timing controls right here, and we have path controls right here. So path controls are the shape of the path. Timing controls is what we're after because that's how fast or slow the object is moving. Got it? Well, right here is the ease control. This arrow represents the ease at the beginning of the transition. This arrow represents the ease at the end of the transition. So the length of this little bar from here to here is represents the length of this transition from there to there. It's not the whole animation, it's just this one selected transition. So what we're going to do is take this arrow and drag it to uh, roughly 40. If you don't hit 40, that's fine. And this one down to about 60. Okay, and that means it's going to sp it's going to start off still, and it's going to speed up over the first 40% of this transition. Then it's going to hold at a constant rate right in the center, and then slowly speed down, uh, speed down, slow down at the end of the transition, which would be like right there. Got that? So we're going to do this. So there we go, and now you see it speeds up, and but then it bounces back. So it's going to do a real nice speed up and slow down, but then it bounces at the end, and that bounce is being caused by no ease on this one. So let's do the same thing. Select that, come down to ease, and set it again to around 40, and this one to around 60. And now when we play these guys back, you'll see it speeds up right in the center and then slows down at either end, so there's no longer a bounce. It looks like a nice, smooth, rocking action and that's how you increase the production quality of your animation. Okay, let's do one more thing. Let's change the type of rock that's going on. Actually, let's see if we can smooth this out in the center. If we select this guy and then come down, remember we need to select the group. Again, you don't have to worry what you're selecting if you use the pose controls, but we'll get there. Uh, let's try moving this down a little bit like this. There you go. That's a better... That looks like it's intended to look. Fair enough. And then we'll take the camera, and of course we can move the camera at any time. And there we go. Now we've got a lower view emergency hack. We can't say emergency hack. This needs to be emergency rock. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed because, again, we're using tweaks, and sometimes tweaks can mess things up. Oh, perfect. Great. Worked just fine for us. So there we go to Emergency Rock. Now the next step of this is what happens if you want to change this from a side-to-side -side rock to an up-and-down rock. Okay, this is a little more detail in terms of fine-tuning the animation. But, you know, hey, clients make changes. You need to know how to, how to uh, control them, how to handle them. Now again, ha, I'm going to warn you for like the umpteenth time here. If you were using the pose controls down here, this would be done in about 10 seconds. But because we're not, I'm going to have to show you how to do it as a tweak. So here we go. All right, we're going to stop this guy. We're going to start at this pose. Let's start in the center pose this time. And remember, the group has to be selected. And we're going to take this guy and go to uh, the object control, straighten it out first. We could probably just say remove tweaks. That would be easiest. And then we're going to slide this one up. All right. Now this one, we're going to select this guy, and let's do the same thing. Let's do remove tweaks for this one too, and then slide this one down. You know, I'm actually figuring, this is going to look too easy. <laughs> You're never going to learn the pose controls because I'm showing you how to do it in such an easy way using the tweaks. All right, now, so at this point, we've got a nice up and down rock, but then of course it goes over to the side because that's where this pose was left. Now, trying to match this one perfectly to that one, never going to happen. So what you do is this. Click on this and just delete it. Then take this one and make a duplicate. So again, hold down Option or Alt on the PC. Click with your mouse and drag it over to the right. Now this time, you see, we need it to snap right to that if we want it exactly where it was, but it's not snapping. So I'm still holding the Option key down so I can get this duplicate here, but now I'll also hold down the Shift key. When you hold down the Shift key, you see it'll snap right to that end then let go of the mouse button before you let go of either the shift or the option keys. Wow, you're becoming a pro. 
well, I think we did it. I think that was it. Let's play it back, see what happens. So now we get an up and a down. Up. Oh, look, there's a little bang right on the end right there. <clears throat> okay, well, that's because um, when we when we deleted this last pose, this transition lost its ease in and ease out. You see this guy right here, it still has those ease settings set. This one is actually a brand new transition, so we're going to need to put its ease back. Again, somewhere near 30, uh, I'm sorry, somewhere near 40 and 60 is going to be just fine. You don't have to have it exact. And now when we play it back, there we go. Emergency rock. See, we do it up and down in case you're on board of a on board a ship. You do it side to side if you're at a um, rock concert and the world starts to spin. Just joking. Okay, so here we go. Uh, that's it. That's it. After this, you know, you just go to the output control and X and uh, render out the movie. If you're inside the After Effects plugin, you just click the OK button and then you go on as, as usual. So that concludes our emergency hackathon. Wow, you've learned all kinds of techniques now. All these things we're going to get back to and we're going to go over them in more detail as they go along. Uh, if you've been going along with us, you're actually up and running. Dude, you can actually create billable work right now. You've learned how to apply presets in the first tutorial. Uh, well, what was that? Uh, chapter two. Uh, in chapter three, you learned how to do all the emergency hacks for all the really basic stuff, right? Slides, uh, spins, and rocking rotations. Um, all that stuff is now at your fingertips. Of course, I taught you the wrong way of doing it. <laughs> Lucky you. Uh, it's not entirely the wrong way, right? Like I, like I kept telling you, it's only the tweaking part, dragging stuff up here. It's workable. It's just not the best way of doing it because, again, if clients make changes to things, sometimes you can end up with those funny pops going along. And again, that's because of, you know, you may not have been looking when you when you selected the object to actually tweak at the time. And there's no reason to even deal with any of that. Once you start using the pose controls down here, believe me, like I said, this is just a it's a two second fix and you're done and you're off to other projects. So that's it for now. Let's watch chapter four.